Welcome to the Thrive Podcast with the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. How, how does your faith kind of play into it or does it play into it? What can be done about it? When I say the church, I'm talking about uh, evangelical white Christians and the black folk who attend their churches. Hello, welcome to the Thrive Podcast with the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Fred Jeff Smith, pastor of Shiloh, and I'm very happy that you chose to either view this on YouTube or Facebook or to listen to us on iTunes or Spotify. I am always interested in your opinions about the podcast, uh, so please feel free to drop us a line at Fred Jeff Smith at cox.net fred jeff smith at cox.net we love to hear from you i am very honored and happy today uh, to have ms diane andrews here with us as our guests most of you know uh, ms andrews from her weekly television program in black and white uh, she is also a motivational speaker. She is also an author. Uh, she, ha- she she wears many hats. <laughs> and uh, we are honored that you took the time to share with us today. Tell us a little bit about who Diane Andrews is. Thank you first, Reverend yes, Smith, ma'am. for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to speak my truth and to, to tell you a little bit about what I do and who I am. Yes, ma'am. And you want me to start talking about who I am? Yes, ma'am, okay. please. please. Okay, uh, I'm a little girl. I always say at the end of my shows, I do something where I light a light and say, if everyone lit just one little candle, what a bright world this would be. And I light a white candle a lot at the end of my clothes. And I saw that as a little girl growing up in Marouge, Louisiana. And that's what I say on my show. I'm from a very small town. Yes, ma'am. And uh, cotton field behind us. <laughs> uh, my, my dad was blue-eyed and blonde-haired. My mother, his people were from the Nigerian. I uh, did the DNA. And uh, my mother's people from Niger- were from Nigeria. So neither one had college educations, but I had a great growing up. And my mother had a photographic memory. Mm-hmm. And um, you talked to my nephew has that. And, and yes, uh, I have that, that memory. And you'll never see a note or anything on any shows of any. Sometimes yes, I do ma'am. five a day. But uh, so I grew up and I have a mathematics chemistry undergrad, uh, BS in math and, and chemistry, and yes, I went ma'am. on to work for IBM as a computer program on the space shuttle. Okay. I can read a dump for you. I can read those <laughs> zeros and ones, the bits and bytes on the dump. I worked on four pi, a similar language on the space shuttle yes, ma'am. when I left uh, college at 19. Okay. So, and then I went on to become an executive with IBM. I went and received an MBA, and uh, I have an honorary PhD that was uh, honored, given to me uh, or awarded to me about four years ago okay. for things I had done in the community, too. I believe to those who are given much is owed. Yes, ma'am. And that we need to uh, give back to uh, as whatever way we can give back. If it's not money, it's time, it's volunteering. We can do a lot of things yes, that ma'am. we need to do. I had a home health agencies, and we, every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, we gave meals to 400 people that I personally paid for that we took to the patients. That's wonderful. Because 99% were black, and it doesn't matter, but they were poor, Mm -hmm. you know, and black or white or brown. Um, We need to help everybody we can help, and that's the way that God believed in doing it, and that's the way I believe in doing it. Yes, ma'am. So, how did you make the shift from mathematics Mm -hmm. and chemistry and the space shuttle into television and, (laughs) and, and this Uh, motivational speaking and the other things that you do with with your program in black and white? It's so strange. When I was, uh, I started to major in mass communication in college. Mm -hmm. My father died, and three months later, my mother got hit by a car. Mm. She couldn't walk for nine years. And she went from uh, bed bound, you remember the crutches, the uh, polio people a lot of yes. people wear now use now and to the the cane on the leg and it took her seven years to ever walk again they thought she would never walk but she did and then she debilitated down back down and that's why I ended up here because I wasn't gonna let my family put in a nursing home so mm-hmm. I came here and I was the highest black woman with IBM when I was still here mm-hmm. and then I said you know I'm not probably never leaving I got married to her doctor and I said I'm probably never leaving here so let me find something else new and I always wanted to write mm-hmm. and I started writing and uh, I always had the desire to I always did speak mm-hmm. at IBM I spoke mm-hmm. I was a, I was a pretty um, 
high-level executive. As I said, I was the number one black woman in the state when I was here with IBM. And the, the director of the entire state was a black man mm -hmm. um, from New Orleans. So, and then I stayed with IBM two years. I had gotten married, and we brought our mother into, you know, into our, our house. And my mother, she was never bothering anybody's business, so I think my... He was my ex-husband when she passed, and he was at the funeral before I was, and he was her doctor. He stayed yes, her doctor, did everything he could to try to save her life. So he was a very, very good—we're still good friends. That's good. Yeah, we're very good, good friends, yeah. So— And so I, that's how I started. I always had a vivid imagination. I do fiction. The first book I wrote was Third Man Out. It's fiction. Mm -hmm. And I have a sequel to that. I was telling you I invented the man in there that, yes, <laughs> that, yes, uh, that yes. I'm looking for is number three. <laughs> but, uh, Let's get closer to home. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about redistricting. It's, it, it's the hot topic for me. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it. I guess that's what I want to know. Yeah. Uh, the state legislature is in session at this moment uh, talking about uh, the redrawing of maps for congressional seats, for state House and state Senate seats, for the state Supreme Court, for the Bessie Board. Uh, and then on a more localized level, uh, you have lines that are being redrawn for the school board, uh, the parish school board, and for the East Baton Rouge Parish Metro Council. What's your, what are your thoughts around the whole redistricting process? I'm not that close to it. I've heard it's going on, but who does the drawing, redrawing of the lines to make it different, and why are they doing it? I guess I would ask you. Who decided we're going to redistrict, and how did they well, decide how to— Well, the federal government to, decided, oh, decided. That, that, that it has to be done every 10 years as okay. a result of the census. Mm -hmm. Now, each we state— We went down last year in, in population, uh, 27,000. Louisiana went down. The last four years, so. as a matter of fact, yeah. Uh, but, but, but my thing is black population increased, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a concern— with how the maps are drawn. To answer your first question, the federal government said that it. Uh, that, that it has to be done. Because it's been done all over the country, isn't it? I heard New York talking every, about every it. Every state is doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but every state has the option as to how they do it. Each legislature has to handle a certain uh, uh, category of redistricting. I, I, I just said, our state legislature is dealing with congressional seats, mm -hmm. uh, state senate, state legislature. Pretty much everything seats, state, almost, it sounds Well, like. on the state no. level. Yeah. Uh, but then East Baton Rouge Parish Metro Council has contracted with a demographer, a, a cartographer, in order to do it here. It just so happens that they use the same guy as the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board is using. And these things are open to bid, mm -hmm. and, and each entity gets to choose who they use. Uh, you say that, 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 that you're, you're not very familiar with redistricting. So it, it, it limits what I, I can I ask you. Yeah, I want to from you. Tell me, <laughs> tell me, what do you see as the concern with redistricting? Racism and, 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 and prejudice. The Metro Council is and, almost half and half, seven, five. No, it's not. It's not it, what is it? it uh, if it's not half, yeah. then it's not I said, half. Yeah, I said almost uh, half. You, you, you have a yeah. city that is majority black. Mm -hmm. You have a parish that is almost majority black. Black. Yeah. And yet the way that the lines were drawn in 2010 maintained a white Republican majority on the Metro Council. It's even worse when you talk about the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the school board uh, has a 52, 53 percent black uh, majority uh, mm -hmm. with regard to those who utilize East Baton Rouge Parish Schools. That, that means you have to carve out Central and Zachary and Baker and just count for the remaining yeah. part of the parish. And yet uh, the majority of the school board continues to be white. And a lot of this has to do with how the lines are drawn. So the main motivator, as I see it, 
is racial. Why uh, aren't the people on the, the blacks who are on the school board and the, the people that are on the uh, Bessie? You say they're redoing that. Bessie uh, is a state matter, but yeah, yes, right, they are they right. are redoing that Bessie. Preston also. Castillo was on my show the right. other day. Um, and then at the Metro Council, right. why aren't they complaining and trying? How would they get it fixed, Reverend the, Smith? The, the complaints are, are, are going to come. Yeah. But I'm asking you yeah. what your thoughts are about redistricting and uh, Well, it should be a fair equity, process. I don't know how to make it equitable. With, with, within uh, this w w with, parish within and the state city. and the parish. And the city. Yeah, as I said, I'm I'm not an expert. I know enough about it to talk about okay. that. Then 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 we'll, we'll yeah, read I'm that. I want to learn that from you, we'll though. How, how would they well, fix it, Reverend Smith? Well, I want to learn. Well, how do you fix it? I, th when it comes to the state, mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 lines that are drawn have to be brought before the governor, and the governor will either give his assent or his veto to mm -hmm. it, and then the legislature has the opportunity to override the veto uh, hmm. and, I mean, yeah, override the veto or the veto is sustained and then a map has to be redrawn. <sighs> this particular governor has damaged himself with regard to uh, what he has kept concealed regarding uh, Ronald Green's death in the state police that yeah. came out last week. And so I don't know how strong he's going to be when it comes to redistricting, he he has made strong statements previous to this Ronald Green revelation. Mm -hmm. He has not been as strong post this Ronald Green revelation. I so, if the governor does not step in and do what I hope he does, because I have a strong feeling about what the legislature is going to do, then it'll be up to the federal court system to come back and say, no, these lines were, were not drawn properly and we're going to do something about it. You know, it's funny you say that. I was speaking to a friend of mine who is a conservative uh, about a month ago, and she thought that stuff would be taken away from the conservative side. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that you think it's going the other way. So that's why I don't know enough and not close enough to it. To, I've heard it both ways. Okay. Let Louisiana has six congressional seats. Mm -hmm. uh, and one-third of the state's population is African-American. Now, you, you're a mathematician. Mm -hmm. What's one-third of six? One-third of uh, about two. Two. Yeah. And so progressive Democratic uh, politicians are pushing, as, long, as well as community activists, are pushing for a second minority-majority congressional district in Louisiana. Republicans, conservatives in the state legislature, check it out. This is not me talking. You can find it in The Advocate. Mm -hmm. it's there. They are vehemently opposed to a second uh, mi minority-majority district. And... I am left to wonder why. What what's the what's the reasoning? What's the rationale? What's the, what's the logical reason? I I know what the reason is. What's the <laughs> logical reason for opposition to one third of the congressional seats being held by one third of, of the, the state's population? I I, I don't have. A, I think there should be. I do. Okay. That's only fair. Okay. I love one third, the fact if we that you said that. If we were half, uh, yes. we should have three. Okay. So right. uh, it's just mathematics. It's, it's just what fairness is, okay. and math is always about the numbers. Okay. I started to ask you uh, uh, a minute ago. I, I, I've watched several of your programs. Uh oh. Do you count yourself as a Republican or a Libertarian or an Independent? Or a conservative. I have heard you voice approval for President Trump, a which, lot leads, of which leads me mm -hmm. to believe that you are Republican. Is is that a correct assessment? I'm on a conservative. My part? You're a conservative. Yeah. Okay. Help me to understand from your perspective as an African American woman, mm -hmm. what conservatism means to you. Policies. To me, it's about policy. I don't believe in abortion. 
I don't believe, definitely not infanticide. Mm -hmm. And most people, when they hear, you know, a Kamala Harris talk about, you know, sh she believes in infanticide and abortion. So it's about some of the policies. I don't believe it. I don't believe in people coming across the border freely, mm -hmm. as they are right now. Two million people uh, since this president took place. I don't believe in that. I think it's unfair. And they're not vaccinated, and they're flying them in different states. And they're not vaccinated. And we don't know, and all of them are not tested. Most of them are not tested. Uh, so I don't believe in, in that. This is the largest number that's ever come across. The Supreme Court did rule three months ago the Remain in Mexico policy should stay. That was where Trump had had, um, in fact, I just had a Cuban come in. And I'm going to tell you about this, number. He was part of the Remain in Mexico plan uh, down at, at the border. Mm -hmm. And he, he was there for a year. And they tested him out. They, they were supposed to be waiting to see if you do qualify for asylum. Mm -hmm. Because asylum is not just, I want a job. Mm -hmm. Asylum means I'm running, and I'm supposed to stop in the first country that I get out of my country. Uh, and it means that I'm fleeing for my life. Mm -hmm. This guy was a uh, He's Cuban. That's out there on YouTube if you want to, or Rumble, if you want to watch those two. I, he came in from Miami here. He's been in America about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Loves this country. He was against the Cuban Communist Party because they're not socialist anymore. They're definitely communist. They're paid through China. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, they tried to kill him. So he escaped through the Dominican Republic, had to come back through Central America, and ended up in the Remain in Mexico policy. He says, I love this country. What I saw being in the remain in Mexico policy there in Mexico for a year, pedophiles, drugs, fentanyl is the highest it's ever been coming into this country. And uh, we have an increase in drug overdoses now, more from fentanyl. Fentanyl comes from China. And fentanyl, they're making it now. Yeah, fentanyl is a substance. This is pretty much well known. Know yeah, and it's pretty much well known that a lot of the, the raw is coming from China. They're making it now in some places in Mexico is what's being reported. But the, they believe that the fentanyl is coming in from China. We can look it up mm -hmm. um, after the show if you want. Mm -hmm. And so I believe you have to stop that. He saw women getting raped all the time trying to cross the border. A lot of people die trying to cross the border. I think it is better. Only 10 percent of people turn out to be true asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that are coming here, if I have a good life, because Mexico has a little bit of a middle class now, and they have a real rich a rich class over there. If I live pretty well where I am, I'm not dying, to, trying to die to get to America. Mm -hmm. And you do risk your life coming here. Mm -hmm. A lot of women get raped after they get in, in here. I saw something on I read something on one of the channels that they have a pass in Arizona where the guys rape them and they hang their panties up, you know, from, from the women. So it's a, it's a deplorable situation, and this is not humane what's going on right now with the people that are coming, on either side. Mm -hmm. that are, this is not about the side. It's about policy. So you had asked me, that's one of the policies I yeah, don't I, believe in. And, and, and the Supreme Court three months ago told them to put the Remain in Mexico policy back in place, that it was legal. What's going on now is illegal, because crossing the border should be illegal. And asylum seekers should be in here, every one of them. Mm -hmm. And they should be tested, you know, however they test them, you know, asking what questions they test them to find out or vet it, I guess is a better word, if they really are asylum seekers. This guy was. And I would ask you to go, go watch that show, and let's talk after when mm -hmm. I get you on my show. Mm -hmm. of what he said, what's going on at the border. Okay. you. I asked you I named what, three policies. what, 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 what your views mm -hmm. are that it's, make you a conservative. It's the policies. I heard you say abortion. I heard you say immigration. What was the third one? Uh, the third one is just giving money away for people not to work. Okay. So when President Biden uh, gave money to people who were not working because of COVID and made federal dollars available for people. Uh, you, you as a conservative are opposed to that? No, I'm opposed to like the uh, child tax credit mm -hmm. um, that is about to end. I understand uh, they voted it out. Mm -hmm. Democrat and Republican, I mm -hmm. think, voted it out because they're saying it went on too long. Okay, you have a child. I have a child or I don't have a child. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to give it to people for a child, why don't you give it? Some other people may need it, not just based on a child, mm -hmm. if I need the money. I think it should be on need and mm -hmm. not on just, I know people who make $250,000 a year who got it. 
Mm -hmm. You know, they have a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. It should have been based on who needs the money, not just throw checks or put it in people's account because you have a child. But it should be based agree, on income. But you would agree that the person who makes $250,000 and receives a child tax credit mm -hmm. is a part of the exception and not the rule. A lot of my friends got it, and they're okay. middle-class people. What, so, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I definitely, yes, I do agree. But okay. how much money was so, wasted so, on so, that? So then the masses of people who needed those dollars and received those mm -hmm. dollars should not have been allowed to receive those dollars because that, there was a... No, that's not what I said. I said it should be on need. I, I, yeah, I heard that part. They should have said the need. But, but what I also heard you say, and, 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 and that's why I want you to correct right. me. Right. What I'm sensing is if we can't do it to 100% certainty, no. then perhaps we shouldn't do it at all. No, no, that's not what I said, okay. and that's not what I meant to come across. Okay. No, it should be on need, and okay. people who need it should get it. Okay. But people who don't need it should not be wasting your and my okay. taxpayer hard-earned money. Why do you think more African Americans are progressive slash liberal as opposed to conservative? I... I certainly know that there are black conservatives, mm -hmm. many of them. My godchild is a, a young woman who is most assuredly a conservative. <laughs> how old is she? Uh, uh, she's 31. Mm -hmm. And uh, hi, Whitney, how you doing? Hey, uh, is she here? Uh, no, but uh, she, she, she'll be watching. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we go back and forth on yeah. this all the time, have been since she was a Could teenager. She I, was a conservative as a teenager. She's been, she's been a conservative. Her mother conservatives, are they? No. <laughs> she, she came to this view totally um, on her own. I'm just curious, as a conservative, as an African-American woman, yeah. as an entrepreneur, yeah. uh, what is it that draws you to conservatism that you don't think uh, has drawn the masses of African-American people? In doing my show and my research and my investigation, I became more conservative. I think it's the things I found out, you know, history. History is such a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. When I read a lot of history, you know, I look at Abraham Lincoln. I didn't know his vice president was a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Andrew Johnson, he put him there in 18, um, when was that, 1860 or something, 60-something, uh, to be his vice president to pull the country back together. Mm -hmm. Then he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Johnson owned slaves in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Where was the uh, Ku Klux Klan? I've done Klan shows. I've been up to Faraday and, and Natchez and done nine actual Klan shows. Mm -hmm. And um, they were, uh, the Klan was the Confederate Democratic people. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Johnson is where, and he started using the slaves again in his farms mm -hmm. back there after the war, after Lincoln was killed. Then I look at Ulysses Grant became president. And he, when he was um, the general, the Union general, his father he was married to this man. He, U Ulysses Grant didn't have a lot of money. And his father-in-law gave him slaves. Mm -hmm. He set all of them free. He seems mm -hmm. like it was a pretty, just history, mm -hmm. what I've learned. He seemed like a pretty decent guy. Mm -hmm. And he was the first one who signed the first Civil Rights Act in 1875, was done under Ulysses Grant. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at Eisenhower. The second and third Civil Rights Acts were done under Eisenhower in 1957 and in 1960. Mm -hmm. Also, the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments allowing us to be full people, allowing black men to vote. Because as we know, let's talk about women-men issues. <laughs> That's what we, we you, I think you everyone would agree with me on certainly have a point, one. yes. Yes. Men could, black men could vote and women couldn't. Yes. It came after. Yes. those amendments, right? So I think black men had the right to vote. Now, was it done right? No. And the vote was taken from them. Yes, from a lot of them. They, Some places they, it wasn't. Down was, south more vote, so. The vote was given to them and then the vote was Down taken south was where the away. problem was. Not up north as much as down south. It was more in the Confederacy states. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, you all were given the right to vote before women were. And mm -hmm. black men were given that title as a vote. So when in 19, uh, not until 1957 under Eisenhower did it become another civil rights and trying to allow us to vote again and allowing us to go to schools. I think there was a big, was it 54 in uh, Arkansas 
when he had to send the troops down there to allow those people in school. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it has been a lot of my um, history. And then, of course, 64, 68, you had the Civil Rights Act. 64 and 65. And you had the, in 68, you had the Voting Rights Act. So you had a lot of acts under Lyndon Johnson, who was a Democrat, who I liked, Lyndon Johnson. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. A lot to... of history has taught me everybody's not bad, so look at policies that they okay, do. Okay. So, but, but you have identified yourself as a conservative. Because I think I have conservative values, and, Reverend and Smith. My, okay. Conservative values with regard to what? Like abortion, because, infanticide. Because um, there, there are social conservative values mm -hmm. and there are economic conservative values. I, I think and, I have some and of both. there are political conservative values. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to determine. There are there are African American people who are conservative about social issues, mm -hmm. moral issues, uh, who are not necessarily conservative with regard to economic issues. Give me an example of the moral. Would that be the abortion? Is that a social issue? Moral uh, abortion would, would certainly be a, yeah. a, a moral yeah. issue. Uh, uh, and the, I think most black women don't really. The, 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 there are still more. Uh, African Americans uh, who are suspect of <laughs> female leadership in this country, uh, especially Af the reason why Donald Trump got a large, a, a larger than expected vote from African American men was because they saw him as being strong, and they saw the Democratic leadership as being too who driven by females, and they are opposed to that. Now, uh, is that something that you've read or analyzed, or you know that, or that's just your opinion, I've Reverend read Smith? It, I've read mm -hmm. it, and but I've seen it. But what's the fact behind it. that? I've read it, and I've lived it. Okay. I'm, trying, I'm trying to About get, Trump. I, 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 I'm trying to get you to answer uh -huh. my question. Okay. What is it that you think makes conservatism attractive to you even though it is not attractive to the masses of, of black African, women, uh, uh, women especially. Of African-American people, well, period. 35% of black men are now conservative, 35 to 40. It has grown a lot in the last five years. But conserv women have not. Black women have not. A lot of it is not. When I don't know say, if people... When you say 35% of African-American men are conservative, please, voted, please, please, please tell Trump me. in the last election. I, know, I, I don't know that it was that high a number that voted for yeah, I, I, I know that, I know that he women. got more... Yeah. 13% is what it ended African -American up being. From African-American men, yes. yes. Okay. But that made them pro-Trump and not necessarily pro-conservative. I have a problem with, 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 with certain conservative points of view. I, I have a problem with a conservative point of view that takes dollars away from social programs where they are needed primarily by marginalized uh, and vulnerable black and brown people. And so I'm trying to understand what it is that makes conservatism attractive to you. Okay. You, you, you have I've just, mentioned four or five you, you, things. Well, the infanticide, the, okay. the border policy, and, and, the immigration and, 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 policy. and I have responded yeah. to that. But to you personally, that's, that's, you, you, you chose, you identify yourself as a, con a, a as a conservative. Mm -hmm. Can, can you, I name some you things don't, that... You don't feel as though conservatism somehow has done a disservice to black and brown people over the last 50 years. Why are conservatives so opposed to the, 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 the John Lewis Voting Rights Act? Do you know what's why, really in that act? Yes, you can call it John I, I, Lewis I all you want. Why, why do you think conservatives are Okay, let me tell you something that happened to me. To the voting rights. Why do you think that conservatives, on the whole, are doing the very best that they can in state legislatures across the length and breadth See, of I this country? I don't agree with that. It's true. To keep people from voting <laughs> instead of making voting more attractive to people. All right, you do, don't agree with mm -mm. it. So, do you think. So tell okay, me where I'm going. Okay. Okay, okay. That, that voting, like even in Georgia, do you believe that when I go to vote or if I mail it in, I should have an ID card? Do you think that anybody who votes should have an ID? 
I don't have a problem with an no. ID. Do you think yes or no, Reverend Smith? I don't have a problem with an so, ID. So, yeah. But, but what but, I have but, a problem but, with <laughs> is a state-mandated ID that says that you can only vote if you have this particular ID, and they that's rule out. That's not in that bill. I've seen the bill. That's no, not true. No, that's not in the federal bill, and but it's in, it's, it's in the bill. bill of several state legislatures. I haven't seen that, that say in that you, that, that you can't Georgia use. Georgia and who else? Are you you can't Georgia? use a school ID to vote. I haven't seen in that. certain states. Where where you is that? In the Georgia one, you say it's two states, several I, I states. I said several states. Yeah, several. Which which ones? I I'm not sure which one, but okay. I do know that this is when when they say that they're going to shut down voting on Sundays, mm -hmm. and that they're going to limit absentee ballots when they, and they're going to limit not absentee mail ballots. ballots. Mail in and absentee are two different things. Let me tell you what happened to me. Why would they limit? Okay, that? I'm a, I can tell you what happened to me in the last. Why election, would they okay? limit that? I'm going to tell you what happened because I have a residence someplace else, okay? And I vote in another state. Okay. And in that state. So you don't vote in Louisiana? Not right now. Mm -mm. So the last election. Really? Mm hmm. Because I, I, I live in two places. Okay. You know, you probably, I, don't, I really don't even know okay. to say that. But to prove this point, whoever I voted for in the last election, I had to mail it in from here. My mailing address is Louisiana, mm -hmm. okay, on everything that I do. So when I, I sent the ballot back in, no. Nothing went with the ballot. They did not require anything to go except me to sign it. How do you know that really came from me? And then three people called me and asked me had I voted correctly for who I wanted to vote for out of this state I was, which is one of the, the six states in, Je you know, in the argument going on about fair elections and fraud. I can tell you. There are 25 states that are arguing. Well, it was ma main six ones. You know, Nevada, Arizona, um, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, those uh, under the Trump election I was talking about. It was really six in main focus doing that. But it was one of those states. And uh, what I saw, and then I talked to my aunt in uh, California. I have a couple aunts out there. You don't need an ID to vote. They send everybody a mail-in, not an absentee. Louisiana, we do absentee. Looks like they do it pretty right here. You do absentee. You call in. You say, I'm not going to be in town or whatever. Could you please send me a vote for absentee? I didn't ask for this mail-in ballot from this state. They sent everybody in this state a mail-in ballot, mm -hmm. and you do not need to send an ID with it. You're sending something to Louisiana. I send it back. How do you even know it's me? So I do believe those are the things that I saw in the voting rights bills for these states require an ID, an ID a state-approved ID. Uh, maybe that's what you're talking about. It may have said. Is that what you're saying? It said state-approved? State-approved ID. Okay. I don't know about that part. And, and, and as a part of state-approved IDs, mm -hmm. they have decided that certain photo IDs are not state Well, I don't think that's approved. right if that's in there. And that should, that, but that's not saying that everything is bad. But I but believe you need be an ID. it fixed if you had a federal Voting Rights Act. Yeah, but that every said, state is different. Said, no, every state is not different when you're voting for federal elections. You're saying that, only for that, federal. That, there are some things that are state, mm -hmm. and there are some things that are federal. But right now the state legislature about, handles everything for federal elections. And if there was a Voting Rights Act, then it would be so handled now we're by the federal... federal it would be handled by the federal government, and it would be supported by the federal because court. Because I think every time that the, the person changed at the top and when the Congress flips, I think it would be changing every four years what's going to be in not, there. Not if there's a law. That's why you have a Supreme Court. That's why you have a I federal just, court The Supreme Court system. just told Joe Biden to put back three months ago the remain in Mexico. They, can, they can't legislate. They can, they can say they're an appeals court. They can tell you what to do, but they can't make you do it. They have no enforcement the powers. federal courts do have enforcement power. Well, the Supreme Court has done nothing for the, this. The, the federal courts do have enforcement power if the law is written. Where the federal courts don't speak, what they normally say is the Congress needs to change the law or the, or the Congress needs to make law. They didn't say this about the remaining Mexico. Law. Okay, but but I'm because not, the I'm law is on immigration, but I am. I'm talking about voting. I and know, I'm, but I'm some Supreme and I'm, Court. I'm talking about conservatives who are vehemently opposed to my having the right to vote. Tell me why liberals I'm talking are about, so I'm into talking about I want the you to January, vote with no ID. I'm talking about the January 6th insurrection that said that uh, what America did in November, mm -hmm. we're not going to accept. 
and we're going to oh, overturn it. Yes, I don't agree. That's if a different necessary, thing. Yeah. by force. I'm talking Most about Most of those people did not have guns. That Nobody there had a gun who was I'm riding. Who got killed? Ashley Babbitt by the black policeman. I'm talking about the Congress that came back into session, the Senate that came back into session even after that insurrection, right. and several senators. Now, you're kind of jumping around now uh, on I'm, the I'm Voting laying, Rights Act. I'm laying out an argument for— For voting what, rights. I'm laying out an argument for Federal Voting Rights Act, okay. and, I'm, and I'm laying out an argument for why I have a problem with conservatives. Okay. Because conservatives seem to be opposed to my You're taking a small number exercise. of people no, at, at the not. Capitol and no, saying that we're I'm all not. like that? I'm saying that across the length and breadth of this country, uh -huh. conservatives are doing everything they can to What about to AOC and Omar power. and Presley? I'm talking about... You got about, liberals as, I'm talking as a about liberals too the that United are States Senate. AOC is a congressperson, right. not a senator. Right. I'm She's talking about a conservative Senate that even after an insurrection chose to vote to not qualify the votes that were done in Arizona, in Georgia, and in several other states. And I'm asking Tell me why your house who why. runs the security wouldn't let the guards come there, which you're was changing, requested. No, I'm not. You're shifting the argument. No, I'm not I'm shifting. I'm asking you a question about conservatism mm -hmm. because you have identified... The, 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 the focus of the question has to do with your choice to be a conservative. But you, I don't agree with you what You have identified saying. yourself mm -hmm. as a conservative. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking and you liberal, what it is, you're, you're liberal, what it is that you find appealing Answer my question. You're about liberal, right? conservatism. <laughs> You're I'm liberal, liberal right? about a lot of stuff. Right. I'm not liberal about everything. I, I'm not 100% anything. Well, but I, I, say, am, I am far more liberal than, than me. you are. Right. Yes. I am far more progressive than you I are some, about many things. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that you and I will agree about a whole lot of right. things. But on this issue, clearly, we don't agree. Because I'm I don't think, understand. I'm just going to tell you, I don't I'm think you have enough information on what's really going on with I the Voting Rights Act. Yes, because I have act. seen the one from Georgia. And it says they don't want at, uh, anyone to show any ID, not just a school ID. It's any ID. If, they if want you to vote like I did from this state. That, they want everybody mailed. Tell me why everybody should have a mail ballot. That's, that's a state rule that was changed. Right. I'm not so talking should it about, stay? I'm not talking should about state rules. I'm talking about a federal voting rights act. With regard to federal, it depends on what's in it. With regard to federal elections, but that I, say that I when, can't, and neither can that, you, that Reverend Smith, you say vote what's in it. For president what's going to of be the in the Voting States, Rights Act? It guarantees certain assurances that people have equal access to the vote. Does that mean mailing everybody an election a, a, a ballot without a signature? Tell me, does it mean that? No, ma'am. It doesn't mean that. That's what they're trying to do in some states? No, ma'am. Yeah, Georgia still wants to mail if, everybody a ballot. If there was a federal law... How do federal, you know what it's going to say, Reverend Smith? Because I've read the law. But the, the law is not written. The Voting Rights Act law is not completely finished. It, it has not been ratified. Right. Yes, ma'am, it's been finished. The, the only thing they do is go back You've and read the entire to a, hundreds of pages. No, I've read the summary. I have not read okay. the hundreds of pages. Okay. But any changes that they make, they make to try to accommodate conservatives. Not just conservative Republicans, by the way. They want to accommodate at least two vocal and probably more uh, uh, conservative Democrats who are equally opposed. John Manchin and Cinema. You told Joe me about that. Joe Manchin and, Manchin and Christian, and Christian Cinema. Cinema. Mm. Yes. And while they stand now, hypo hypocritically saying that we're in favor of voting rights, but they don't go but, to build but, back but, better. But, but no, but we're not going to touch the filibuster, which right. is. You know, Which is hypocritical and duplicitous. I was going to say something else. It's hypocritical and duplicitous. It's their cover-up for the fact that they don't truly believe in voting rights across the length and breadth of this country. They think, like you think, that <laughs> voting rights should be a state I issue really do. I and think not it's a, state a federal issue. Yeah, issue. I do. 
Okay. That's just my opinion. Okay. Let the state legislature decide what that state should do. Let's You've say, been in here with me for an hour and 17 minutes. Well, hey, I really appreciate it. He doesn't your time. have to uh, take it off. Let me just say this. Suppose no, a certain he's state. Not gonna rec- he's not going to edit anything. Everything oh, that you say goes is going to go out. Okay. We're, we're not editing okay, well, let, anything let, at all. Let's finish this because I, want, I do want to say something when you. you Paint me in this this brush. Uh, Donald Trump had the lowest. You in a brush. Donald Trump had the lowest I'm unemployment. I'm taking what you said, it, and I'm and you asking you. Extrapolating it to other things. I'm, I'm asking you how it is that you came suppose to the decision one state, that you came uh, yes, to. One, suppose one state had some serious disaster that year that they needed Once to again, change you have their moved voting to hi- rights. You have moved to hypothetical. Yes, I am. I'm but talking about why it should be by the state. I, I don't even know what the rules are in most other states. I'm talking about a Every federal state likes to I understand I'm, I'm talking about, about a voting federal rights act, voting federal rights rights act that has to do with federal elections. And I know it's called it would, John Lewis. It, it would not change what happens in local elections and and what happens in state elections. But it's what's it happening would change in the federal. What I know, in to the federal senator, to the house election. and to the president. Is, yes, I know. That is correct. I know that yeah. So, but I can tell you what so, happened to me in one of those so states. why why do conservatives have a problem? Because, with the Federal Voting Rights Act. Because we don't and know by what's the way, in it. Just why, like you why, don't know why what's in it. Why is it that, that conservatives only recently have a problem with there, the Federal Voting Rights Act? There has not been sent just they, to the Voting they, Rights they, Act. They did not have a problem with the Federal Voting Rights Act at any other time in history. They have voted consistently and repeatedly in favor of the Voting Rights Act. You're talking about the, every the time, Civil Rights Act every, of every, I'm talking about... The Voting Rights Act. I'm not talking about the Civil Rights Act. I'm talking about the Voting Rights Act. Every time it has come up, I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you that every time it has come back up for renewal, it has passed. And it has passed with what they love to call bipartisan That's from the 1968 Voting Rights Act. And it has been renewed. But it has been renewed several times. It has been renewed several because times. Because they put but, stuff but, in there to take stuff away from the states. They have never before states, tried to take states, state federal states election states rights. have never had the right since 1965. Mm-hmm. The voting states rights States have never had the right to make rules with regard to federal elections. Only people can qualify the federal election the was federal, the state legislature. The, the federal elections had to be sanctioned by the federal courts. Yeah, but okay, which no, is essentially what the no, voting rights No, I disagree rights with you on that. The state legislature, that was at Gore and uh, who was that, Bush? Back at the time, they said the state legislatures changed the, how they were the, handling the, 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 the reason, federal election. The only reason why Bush became president of the United States is because Al Gore decided that he would not take the country. The state to legislature in Florida had changed he, the he way decided, they were handling the vote. He, he they did the same take, thing in this last election. They decided that he would not take the, the, the country to court, that it would not be in the best interest of the country to do so. Because he would lose, because they, the state legislators control the federal election. They are the ones who have to send it to the feds. Conservatives to the historically have been in opposition to the expansion of the rights and privileges. What do you want expanded to do, Reverend Smith? You said you don't want mail-ins with no ID. No. You don't want that. What, I, what do you want I, to I, change? I, I never said that I, I have a problem with mail-ins That's with what no I said. You don't, you don't, I know. I, mail-in. I, 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 do you I, want everybody in Louisiana to receive a, a mail-in ballot whether they need it or I, not? I want there to be a uniform system of voting for federal offices. And what should be in that uniform system that is that we can't do in the state? States make their own rules. And I like that. I see. Wasn't the so, Constitution so, set on so, sovereign so, states? So then the answer to your the answer to <laughs> I like your state question. Controlling the it, the yeah. answer to your question. So 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 then you think states should be able to say whether or not you can come into No, I'm talking about elections. We're talking about elections. No, I'm talking about I'm talking elections. I'm talking about the the full freedom and liberty of I'm not talking about that. People. No, I'm no, not talking about but, that. I'm talking about but, elections. But if federal given, elections. if given the opportunity, there are certain states that would say that you can't do business in this state. Now, I'm not talking 
talking you, about that? No, that's great. That's a different thing than an no, election. No, ma'am, it's not different. This is not an voting rights act. Certain things have to do. You're switching now, Reverend Smith. No, what I'm doing is I'm asking you what it is that you're trying to make me say, wh- yeah. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get you to explain to me why it is you think that conservatism is a good thing, and the majority of black people don't. Because the majority... That, 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 that's the original question that I asked. Right. You are... And I an, gave you what you, I thought you, you about are, policies. You are, you are an upwardly mobile... Yeah. But let me tell you, Donald Trump, did you know this? Gave black universities 10 years of Pell Grants when Obama tried to take them. They can never be taken from them. He, oh, I'm not let me just finish. talking about Donald Trump. But I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about some things that I liked he did, because that was conservative to me. Obama tried to stop the Pell Grants to black universities. Lowest unemployment of black women and black people ever under Donald Trump. And that was unskilled and skilled and educated. Okay. Last 50 years, lowest employment for women. I liked his policies. Mm-hmm. He was doing something to help this country and to put people back to work. So you like Donald Trump? I like, again, I keep saying policies. Okay. I don't have to like a person. Did you I like vote the, for all their politics. I'm not going to answer that. Okay. Did, did you vote for Biden? Yes. Are you a liberal? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. I did vote for yeah. Biden. I'm not going to answer and, who I voted for. And, and I voted for Obama twice. I never voted and, for Obama, I'll tell you that. And I voted for... Uh, uh, Clinton was the one before Clinton. That. Yeah. No, Clinton wasn't the one Bush before. Bush was before that. You didn't vote for that. I know, but I'm, saying, I'm talking to Democrats Bush. who won. <laughs> yeah. I, so, so I have no problem telling anybody who, right. I, who I voted for. Right. Uh, I really appreciate your time. <laughs> You're going to have to come back. We're, we're an hour and 25 minutes. Is all that's going to be out there? Yes, every last bit of it. Okay. Uh, it might be part one, part two. Uh, we've had to do that before yeah. in the past. But I really appreciate it. I had other things that I wanted to bring up. but we, okay. well, we, I'm going to get you on my show, too. You'll, you'll be, I was on yeah. Jeff Craig's show out of New Orleans uh, last week, and a liberal called in. They called him the Flaming Liberal. Mm-hmm. He's out of New Orleans, ringside politics. And I don't uh, think he I'm says he wants to debate me. You and I had a debate today. I, I don't think I'm <laughs> flaming. But... Uh, <laughs> Let me, let me ask you this question. Oh, are we I done yet? I'm tired, Reverend. Almost. <laughs> almost. I, I ask my guests this question uh, almost every time. Uh, do you have kids? No, I don't. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you had kids, mm-hmm. would you want your children to be raised in Baton Rouge? I don't know. Probably not. I don't. But I'm not a Baton Rouge person. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But, but based upon what you know about Baton Rouge, based upon the fact that you live at least part-time it's, it's, in Baton Rouge, yeah. Would you be okay if your kids lived in Baton Rouge, or would, would it would, would it be disturbing to you if they chose not to live in Baton Rouge? No, it would not be disturbing to me at all for okay. them not to live in Baton Rouge. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your okay. time. All I right. really, really Thank appreciate it. Thank you, Reverend Smith. It's been Thank j- you for enjoyable. Viewing. Thank you Thank for listening. You, audience. We'll be back again next time.